Hey guys, it's Chase. Um, it's a beautiful day out here, and I wanted to actually make a video. Let me turn you around. In response to um, Tequila's, um, this is Tequila's or Lady Grave, the Lady Grave Dancer um, giveaway video tag thing. Um, I am working with an app on my phone and on my Kindle, so I don't even know how, or I don't even know if I can, um, do an actual, like, video response, um, but anyway, uh, I hope this is okay, uh, so, I guess what we're supposed to do is, um, it, like, kind of explain our experiences or tell about our experiences or whatever with, um, like, the paranormal, like, ghosts and stuff, um, so I guess uh, I'll just start out by saying that I'm, I don't consider myself a psychic or anything like that by any means, but ever since I was a kid, um, I, like, I, it kind of runs in my family, um, where, like, we, like, can see different spirits and, and, like, feel them and, like, hear them and stuff, um, I guess the first real, uh, memory I have with, with, like spirits and ghosts and everything is when I was really little um my aunt lived in this big like uh, like old like probably dating back to like the 1800s um like apartment building it used to be one like big house um right next to the railroad tracks um there was a woman there who uh well I'll tell you the story first uh we, when we were kids, we'd play, and in the living room, and all over the house, and, um, in the apartment, they had the upstairs apartment, and, um, when we were kids, uh, we'd be playing in the living room, and the attic door, which was, like, right in the living room, would open up, and there was, there'd be a late, we'd look over, and there'd be an older lady, and she'd go like this to us, like, you know, like, no, no, you know, or, she didn't say anything, but she'd go like this. Um, she was kind of like, I guess how I would describe her appearance would be like an older, you know, like a grandma type type figure. Um, you know, she was kind of like rainbowy, like see-through swirly. Um, you know how like uh, if you look at oil in a puddle, um, how it like has that like swirly, like rainbow effect? Well, that's kind of what she had um we we'd be sitting there um the radio would change and stuff and we'd say grandma turn it back and and the radio would switch back um she wasn't like mean or anything um what happened was uh we spoke with the landlord and found out that that was actually his one of his like great great grandmothers or something um she used to smoke a pipe and one day she was sitting on her chair and smoking her like corn cob pipe um and I guess she fell asleep and the pipe like fell on her dress and burnt her um she actually got burned alive basically um so the house was very uh we'd find like weird things just happening like the radio and the TV and stuff would shut off like I said um we there was this mask the one time that we found in the basement like an old like weird mask and we it creeped us out when we were little kids so we like threw it in the dumpster and the next day it was out of the dumpster we threw it in the dumpster again and it was out of the dumpster I mean it could have been like somebody messing with us when we were kids but we don't think so like who would you know do that like who would who would reach in a gross dumpster and get out of mask and just a mess of kids I don't know but um that was when I was really really young um the next thing I guess that that comes to mind is uh when I was like I'd say maybe eight or nine um I went to uh I was up you know it was like a Friday night or something I was up and bored and I had just went to bed um I laid down in my bed, and we had two Rottweilers, 
and the Rottweiler would always, my one Rottweiler would always jump in bed at night, and the one night I I felt, you know, something lay at, in between my legs, like, like, down, like, you know, at my feet, like, in between my feet, um, I, like, I thought it was the, our dog, so I, like, kicked at it, but there was nothing there, and as I kicked at it, my whole leg, like, I felt, like, a hand on my leg, and the whole leg turned, like, really cold, like, freaking weird cold, um, I freaked out, I know I wasn't sleeping, because I just laid down, um, I felt this thing get up, and move up closer to, like, my head area, and I looked, and it actually blacked out my alarm clock, like, I couldn't, it was, like, a black figure, um, I couldn't see my alarm clock, and I also couldn't feel the breeze of my fan, um, it was blocking it, and I freaked out and just yelled, um, not, you know, because I wasn't used to, like, dark things like that, um, so my mom actually, I told my mom, and she actually said that she had the same experience when she was a kid, um, let me see what the time is here, okay, I have enough for a little bit yet, um, one of the more recent things, um, is, uh, me and my friend Jeff, um, that by, up by, um, where I live in a town called Ephrata, there was this huge, um, hotel type thing, it was a hospital, it was a hotel, um, the latest was, it was a spiritualist, um, like, camp, like, summer thing, like, where, like, back in, like, I guess it was, like, the 20s and 30s when spiritualism was really popular, um, it was called Camp Silver Bell, it's really, it's an awesome history. You guys can look it up, like Camp Silver Bell in Ephrata, Pennsylvania. Um, it's a really awesome story to it. And when we were, when me and my friend Jeff, like, I'd always go in and explore. Like, I never broke in, but there was, like, windows and stuff that were out at the bottom where you could get in. Um, me and my friend Jeff went, went in, and we were looking around and, you know, freaking each other out and just messing around. And um, the first thing I think that happened was all of a sudden we got, um, we shined the flashlight on this sign that said, like, the dinner, like the, it was like like an old menu sign. So we must have been in, like, the um, like the cafeteria or the dining hall. And as soon as the flashlight hit that dining hall sign, it, the, the, it, like, noise filled the room, um, we heard, like, it was almost as if you'd go into, like, a busy restaurant, and you hear that noise, and, like, the plate, the plate sounds, and the people talking, but, like, you can't really make out what they're saying kind of thing, because it's just so many people talking, like, having their murmured conversation, um, and we, at first we thought that it was, um, like, other people in there, or, like, the cops or something, but we were definitely the only ones in that, that building, um, there were no flashlights, no nothing, and it was the distinct sound, of uh, sound of dining, like a, a full restaurant, um, so, of course, we got freaked out and ran, um, let me see the time, okay, um, I got room for a little bit more, <laughs> I could, like, honestly go, this could be turned into, like, an hour and a half, um, video, but on my, I'm using my phone, so my phone only can do like 10 minutes or something like that, which I really want to get a new camera. But anyway, um, another story I guess would be up here in my area, um, there's what we call the meat locker, and it's kind of like a, like, like a wooded area that is, that along the road there's this giant old meat locker, um, and there's, like, an old church up there, and what it used to be was there was a huge hotel up there um, back in, like, the 1700s, 1800s that actually burned down, and the whole woods is, like, known for being really haunted. Uh, a couple of times up there, you'd go by, and the meat locker door would be closed. Um, you'd, we'd, like, turn around and come down the road, and the, it would be open, um, you know, uh, and it's a really heavy, like, wrought iron 
door that doesn't move in the wind or anything like that. Uh, 